Okay, welcome to video two. In this video, I want to employ the things that we talked about in video one, and I want to show you how I can practice those things in a dynamic lunge practice. Uh, I, I will again walk through some of the details, but I'm going to show you effectively five different types of lunge practice that I might do on any given day. Uh, they do kind of build incrementally on each other, but you can, of course, just take any one of them and work on it as long as your form and structure is still doing just fine. So now that you have some idea of what you might want to work on, let's take a look at what drilling the lunges might look like. So first note, I have Justin here that I'm playing against, but I'll also just take my sword outside and I'll hit a post or I'll hit a tree. So, you know, what you're using to lunge against, uh, not a big deal, hang a target on your wall, not a big deal. Um, when you are working on specific things, when you're trying to refine your lunge, or when you're first learning it, break it down into its three parts. So at first, work on the core lunges, work on going from terza through seconda or through corta to hitting your target. So first, let's start with the structures. You want to form a good terza. You want to make sure, as we discussed in the previous video, that your terza is solid, that your knee and your toe come up the left side of your body, or right if you're left-handed. You want to make sure that when you have finished your lunge, that you are solid, that again, knee, toe, hip, shoulder are all in line. You want to work mindfully through the three parts of the lunge. Eventually, you want to make that all second nature. But for now, you want to work through and create the good form. Practicing and gaining your muscle memory, but with bad form, will injure you in the end. So starting out here with the terza, the things that I tend to try to pay attention to are that I have good structure here, that I am pointing my toe at my opponent and it's not wandering in, and that I lift my arm. I'm not extending and pushing it out. I'm just lifting it to threaten my opponent more. So you practice the three-part lunge, checking your structures at each point for a while. So I start off in a good terza. I've got my back leg turned out. I have this line coming up the left side of my body. Good structure. My front foot is pointing at my opponent. So I lift my arm, part one of the lunge. Then the sword effectively pulls me forward, hinging at the hips, part two of the lunge. My arm is still solid. I'm not reaching for my target. My legs are still in the same position they were in. My weight is just to the inside of my front foot. So we're all good. Now I bend this front leg and I extend this rear leg and I go into the final part of my lunge. I make sure again, my shoulder, is in a good position, it's strong, it pushes my opponent. I am balanced over my front leg, but I'm not directly over my front leg. So now I'm in my good third part. This leads to the question of how to recover. So what I do, pull my head, pulls my shoulders. This spring here now unloads. This one compresses, which catches me. My arm stays up until the last second and then it drops as I'm recovering out of range. Another quick note, there's a couple of ways to handle that last part, the, the final part of the lunge. If I have gained my opponent's sword, I've got full control over the space in front of me. My weight is already forward. All I need to do at this point is just bend this front leg effectively fall into the lunge, or even pick up my front foot and fall into the lunge. If I want a more dynamic, explosive attack, what I can then do is, as I move my weight over my front leg, I release this spring, which is under tension, while I'm back over it. And this leg then acts to catch me. 
as I go into this attack. Let's do it sword first. Right? So more explosive or more controlled. You can practice both ways. You can also start in seconda o quarto and just do the last two parts of the lunge. Another thing you can practice is just going from terza into quarta, or from terza into seconda, and then back again. So the first two parts of the lunge. Now, as you are practicing, and as you've smoothed it out, you can start adding in paying attention to your measure, figuring out where your different measures are for you and which lunge to use at what times. So now I have defined my three measures against Justin. So my wide measure, I need to take a step in order to hit the person. My narrow measure, I, all I have to do is bend my front leg, but I do have to bend my front leg to get that reach to hit the person. Then my narrowest or close measure, all I have to do is change postures. It's basically just reach out, bend at the waist, injure the hips, to touch my opponent. So the three main measures, wide measure, narrow measure, and narrowest or close measure. So now you've smoothed out your lunge, you want to start playing with measure. So work in starting from out of measure. So my opponent out here cannot hit me, I cannot hit them even with a very long lunge. So I take Terza out of measure, and I sneak in until I'm at the edge of my wide measure. Now I can practice dynamic lunges and recover back. Or I can sneak in a little closer, get into the narrow lunge range, imagining that I'm controlling the space between us by maybe covering their sword. And then all I have to do is a firm-footed lunge, which is extending and bending but not taking a step, right? Cover back. Maybe I want to sneak, work on gliding all the way into the very closest measure to where all I have to do is change postures. 
and then recover back. So start working on your measures, start working on where to start to hit your opponent, which lunge you need to hit your opponent, and work it up until you don't need the tape anymore, to where you know how far you are and all you have to do to hit your opponent. So the last thing that I want to do um, is take your lunge and turn it into a tactical option. So by that I mean, you've learned and practiced now going from terza to seconda, or terza to quarta. You've practiced going from seconda and quarta into the final part of the lunge. So now we're gonna add those two together, and I would also say add in the measure work as well. But during that last stage, your arm is already pointed at a target. As you're releasing your leg into the final part of the lunge, find a different target. So I might approach in seconda, in theory covering their sword. Now I'm going to make them very nervous by coming forward quickly, but as they uncover a different hole, I'm going to drop into quarta instead, recover back. I am going to approach in quarta. I'm going to approach threatening their sword arm. Boom. I threaten. They move that arm, uncovering the other side of their body. So as I go into my lunge, I roll into seconda. Now you want to smooth that out over time and minimize that pause. So I'm coming and I'm going to approach with my sword pointing at their head. Threaten, drop. Get them to try and raise their hands and as their hands are coming up, you are already dropping into that lower thrust. This is a tactic you can use. You're drawing their parry and moving your sword as they're parrying to find a hole, to find something else. All right, that is the end of this video. My next video, I will bring a dagger out and I will show you what things I practice when I'm lunging with a dagger. And then I hope to have a fourth video coming out after that as well. I hope that these help you. Uh, let me know if I can answer any questions down in the comments and everyone fight safely.